What's good, guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title, today we're going to be talking about my most nervous game ever and things that I learned afterwards. And for this story time, I don't even want to waste any time. Let's jump right into it. When I talk about my most nervous game ever, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys thought I was talking about, yeah, it had to be a game in college. Like, that's where he talks about he felt a lot of the pressure. It had to be in college. No, my most nervous game ever was my junior year of high school. And let me set the stage for you guys so you guys can really understand like why I was so nervous before that game. So if you guys remember the previous story times, my first time playing with Game Elite was that summer after my sophomore year. If you remember, I thought I played extremely well. I expected to come home and have my phone blown up. I was going to get calls, offers. None of that happened. For that whole beginning of my high school season, my junior year, I was kind of like, confused because I didn't know what was going on. I had a couple coaches reach out, tell me that they were going to come see me work out or play, but I still had gotten no offers at all. Like I was completely confused. And then there was this big tournament coming up. It was called the Adidas Explosion. I've talked with you guys about this before. It was being held at Wheeler High School in their old gym. And this tournament was one of the biggest tournaments in the state of Georgia at the time. And I knew for a fact, a lot of coaches all around the country were going to be at that gym because here's why. That entire day, the games were all filled with high major talent, like basically. So in the morning, they had ticket DeAndre Ballard. You guys probably don't know who that is. A lot of people probably don't. He was one of the best players in Georgia in my class. He ended up going to Florida. I played for Kale, so we had one of the earlier games because it wasn't the powerhouse that it is now. But later on that night, you had Wendell Carter, who was a lottery pick, playing Green Forest. And if you're from Georgia, you know Green Forest got like footers all the time. Like the size that they have on that team is ridiculous. And then later on, they had Pebble Brook versus St. Francis. So at the time, it was Colin Sexton and Jared Harper versus Kobe Simmons. Like, this was going to be the main event in Georgia, and I was just lucky to be in it. And I was nervous because, like I said, I knew coaches were going to be there. But there was another part that I don't really talk about. I felt like I never really got the respect from, you know, other players or other coaches. So I knew everybody in Georgia was going to be in that gym and they were going to be able to watch me for the first time. So let me take you through that day. Scratch that. We're going to start the night before because the night before the day of that game, I'm talking about I could barely sleep. Like I'm waking up out the night. I keep moving because I'm just thinking about all the potential scenarios that could happen. Like what if you play bad? Like what if you play good? Like could you get an offer? Because there's going to be coaches in there. Like what's going to happen? Like this performance is really going to make or break your career. This is what I was thinking about the entire night before that game. I wake up in the morning and actually before we had the game, we had to give back to the community. So we went to a Walmart and was helping kids, you know, buying toys because it was a holiday season. But before we even did that, we had to go to our high school first and watch film early in the morning. So after film, I remember this like it was yesterday because I was so nervous, my stomach was jacked up. I had to go to the bathroom. I'm walking to the bathroom and my phone buzzes. So I look at my phone, I'm like, like, what is this? Like, what? And this tweet right here pops up as I'm walking to the bathroom. I tell you, no lie, you can check the time on the tweet and everything early in the morning. So the nerves that I already had just got multiplied times 100. So I'm really in the bathroom and I'm just sitting there like, oh, bro, like you got like you got to perform. Like, keep in mind, this tweet got sent out. What did it say? Like 956. The game was at like two. So I'm sitting in the bathroom like, bro, you got to play in like four hours and all these coaches going to see you and everybody in Georgia going to see you play like you have to perform. So I'm sitting in that bathroom really going through it like for real because I didn't know what was going to happen. In my head, I was thinking like if you mess this opportunity up, you might not get the scholarship that you've been wanting. But if you play well, like I said, you could possibly get it. The game was that important in my career. So we go to the Walmart to help out the kids and I'm going to be completely honest. Physically, I was there. But mentally, like I was already thinking about the game, like that's all I was thinking about, especially after the tweet, because now I know that people are literally going to be coming to this game to see if I can really play for real. We finally finish up at the Walmart and we go to Wheeler High School, right? So I walk into the gym and it isn't crazy, crazy packed because like I said earlier, we got one of the earlier games. We weren't like a big name team yet. But still on the sideline, I see Avery Johnson. So he was the head coach of Alabama at the time. There were a bunch of other coaches there on the baseline. You got hoop scene, UGA was there as well. Like I see all that. You also had AAU coaches, AAU directors on the baseline that I recognize, you know, from playing EYBL, obviously Game Elite because it was out of Wheeler. Like I was seeing everybody in that gym. And as I'm walking to the back, if you played there, been to Wheeler's old gym, you know what I'm talking about. I'm walking under that main hoop going into the back towards the locker room. And I'm really just kind of just closing my eyes like, all right, B, like you got to perform. Like 
Like this is gonna be it. This is gonna determine like where your career is gonna go. Like you better lock in and get ready to hoop. Up until tip off, I was completely nervous still. You know when you're in warm ups and you're not trying to miss any shots. So you're only taking like layups and I'm just really working on hooks and form shooting cause I'm not trying to do anything that looks too crazy out there. Make me look bad before I even start playing. I was that nervous about it. Tip off happens and usually for me, like when I used to play, I might be nervous before the game, but the second the tip off goes up, nerves go away and I'm ready to play. But this game was actually a little bit different. When the tip off happened, I'm still on the court and I'm like, oh, like, wait, oh no, you got to play now. Like I'm still kind of nervous about it. And it actually did take me a little bit to actually get into the rhythm of the game. But, you know, like I said, our team wasn't the greatest. We played Peachtree Ridge. I told you guys before they had Connor Hayward, who was killing us. And he just got drafted to the NFL. Young Devin Vassell, who was, like I said, a sophomore at the time. And he got drafted to the league eventually later on. Remember, we talked about his story before about how long he had to wait before he got on. But they were killing us early. Like for me, I got to the free throw line early, blocked a couple shots. I drove from the high post and finished in the paint. Like, that's how you know I was nervous. I've told you guys before, I wasn't the player to put it down, but I did in that game because I was crazy nervous. If you guys actually want to watch the full game, it still is on YouTube. I'm going to link it in the description. But we're down in the game early, and I've told you guys before, coaches want winners, not losers. So even though I was playing, like, okay for my standards, I was like, bro, we're losing this game, and I think we're losing by maybe, like, 15 to 17 so I'm like bro I might be playing well but we're losing this game like coaches aren't going to want me anyway so we come into that locker room I have head coach Sellers come in there he get on everybody specifically on me remember like I said I thought I was playing okay no he told me straight up you know the opportunity that you have right now and you're not giving us everything you have it doesn't look like you are you need to lead us this second half to try and get us back in this game second half comes around i turn it up a little bit more our team as a whole turns it up a little bit more we ended up cutting the lead down we did end up losing the game but i wasn't aware of my stats again we lost the game i'm still kind of mad because i'm like bro we just lost like these coaches definitely not going to want me. Like, I might have played okay, but they're not going to want me until my assistant coach tells me the stats I had in that game. I had 17 points, 15 rebounds, and 12 blocks in that game. A triple-double with blocks in that game. I didn't know until afterwards, until, like, local basketball, you know, analysts were taking my picture after the game, and I'm like, we just lost, like... Why are they taking my picture? I didn't really play that well. Like I said, I had a triple-double, didn't realize it. And at this point, we're going to start to talk about things that I've learned from that from that game, my most nervous game ever. The first thing that I want to talk about is I didn't realize it up until after the fact, you know, after I realized the stats that I had. But those nerves that I was feeling from that night before, the entire day leading up to that game, they weren't nerves. I was excited to play. And I hear it from a lot of people, you know, when they discuss nerves and discuss, you know, that feeling that you get in your stomach, the butterflies. Don't think of it as, oh, I'm so nervous, like I'm nervous that I'm going to mess up. No, I was excited to play. I was excited to show the state of Georgia, to show all the coaches, to show everybody like the work that I've been putting in, that I am that good and I am a college level basketball player. I want you guys to start to think about that whenever you get those nerves, whenever you get those butterflies in your stomach. Don't think about, oh my gosh, like I'm so nervous to play. Like this is nerves that I'm feeling. No, think about it as, no, you're excited to play. You're excited to show people, you know, what you've been working on. You're excited to show people the talent that you do have. I think a lot of people mess up when they think about it as nerves, nervousness, because that word in itself has a negative connotation. It has a negative meaning. So when you think that, oh my God, I'm so nervous and oh, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like my hands are sweaty. Like I'm going to drop the ball or I'm going to I'm going to miss this shot. When you think like that, all of a sudden, all you're letting in your mind is all these negative thoughts like, oh, I'm nervous. But if you change that thought process to I'm excited to play, these aren't nerves. No, I'm just excited. This is natural. Like, I can't wait to get out there on the court. All of a sudden, only positive thoughts will get into your mind. And from that point on, I'm going to be honest with you guys. In most of the games after that, where I felt, you know, those butterflies and those nerves, I perform my best because I started to realize that, hold on, B, you're not nervous. You're just excited. So there's nothing to be scared about because when you get out there, you're excited because you know you're ready. You're not nervous. You're really excited about it. The other thing I want to talk about is, you know, after that game when I had the triple-double with coaches on the baseline, on the sideline, with all the analysts there too, I swore to myself that I was going to get an offer after that game. In fact, when me and my family were walking out of Wheeler at the end of the night, Avery Johnson was leaving at the same time. He literally tapped me on the arm and said, you played pretty well today. Like, we're going to be in touch. 
So you couldn't tell me nothing when I was going home. I swore I had an offer, like that was automatic. It might not have been from Alabama because I was high major, but from that performance, I was gonna get an offer, right? I got no offers from that performance. I had a triple-double with coaches, whatever, no offers. But what did it do? It opened up an opportunity for me to go to the elite preview. Remember, I told you guys the camp that Hoopsine put on that had all the top players in Georgia and from the neighboring states. Then they came and they'd invite analysts to see everybody play. And what did I say? I didn't think I played too well in that camp. The article comes out, I'm one of the top 10 players in that camp. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I was a top 10 player in this. Oh, I'm for sure about to get an offer, right? No, it still took weeks later. I think almost a month later is when I got my first offer from Wofford. I say all that to say this, you can't stop chasing your dream. You can't think that a singular game is gonna make or break your career. You can't think that a singular tournament is going to make or break your career. Like I said, I was sure I was gonna get an offer after getting a triple-double. Didn't happen for me, but you know what it did? It opened up an opportunity for me to get ranked at the top 10 players in the elite preview, right? I thought that was gonna give me an offer. It didn't, it still took the work after that to eventually get my first offer, which is what I'm telling you guys is you have to keep going. You have to keep going. You might not see the results right away, but guess what? All those little small victories that you're having, you might not be able to see them. They might not be perceivable, but I promise you they're adding up. It's all adding up. You might not see it, but it's going to keep adding up until that one day where you're going to reach your goal. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, if you want the one-on-one -on -one evaluations or the breakdown, they go on the channel and my website, btibasketball.com in the description. Also, if you have any questions for me or need any advice, Hit my link for Noodle in the description. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time for the next video.